Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a video that's kind of been requested um, a bit over time, and I've actually made it before, but I wanted to remake it, because the old video sucks. Uh, this is my Veloster head unit. Um, what the hell was that click? Oh, it was my chinchilla. Anyway, I wanted to remake the video about the basic hacking of the Gen 1 Hyundai Veloster head unit hacking stuff. So this is going to probably end up being a series because I'll show how to do like a custom theme. I'll explain what does what. I'll, over time, we're going to say over time, learn how to put custom firmware on a USB and get it to boot that way. And then eventually take the head unit apart and actually add the custom firmware to the uh, storage on the head unit. And also how to just modify the head unit in various ways and how to extract it and inject new stuff into it things like that so the videos where i'm actually on the head unit won't come until at least like april or may because i live in ohio it's freaking cold i don't want to be outside <laughs> so i wanted to show you guys today how to extract the lgu file the lgu file houses all the actual firmware files basically is what i'm trying to say so as you can see in this folder this is just my backup folder that has all the tools and stuff like that there is a dir to lgu which stands for directory to lgu lgu being the file that you'll uh, learn here in a second lgu to dir which is basically just extracting the files to a directory and then some command files that will automatically run this for you and actually do the work for you and then as you can see i have these zip files so the zip files actually are just the contents, of, or the ISO files, I'm sorry, are just the contents of the, uh, come on, computer, you're, I paid a thousand dollars for you, be expensive, or actually act expensive. So as you can see, this is the navigation one, this is non-navigation. There's actually more files in the non-navigation than there are in the regular navigation file, and that's actually because they accidentally left some files in this ISO that they shouldn't have. Why is this taking so long? It's probably because this is running. Yeah, it's because that's running. And because all this stuff is on my external hard drive, so it's do it's opening a 1.3 gig file off of USB 3.0. So it, it should have opened by now, but you know what? I guess not. There we go. So as you can see, there's all this stuff in here. Now, the thing about, that's interesting about the non-navigation head unit is they accidentally left some files behind. Oh my god, why did I click that? Anyway, so they left this recycle bin file behind. For those who don't know, the head unit runs Windows. It's an old, like, 2001 Windows ME. Now, if you compare these files, you'll see that something is definitely missing. It's missing that system volume information and the recycle bin uh, folder. So the recycle bin folder, this is supposed to be a hidden folder. It wasn't supposed to be included. I can tell you that right now. The recycle bin folder basically actually houses a lot of source code for the head unit that we have, but we're missing a bunch of the private stuff that LG obviously would never have deleted. So as you can see, some of this stuff in here is like flasher files and actual source code in C um, to explain what different stuff is and like the SVN and I actually have some friends I'm going to be talking to to see if they can help us modify this stuff using this information. Um, and we could actually get some really cool stuff from this. But, so like, for example, if I pull this out, this is actually source code for the head unit that you'll find for, you know, like you could search this and probably find this PDF file with Google. Uh, and then there's just a bunch of stuff in here that you'd like have to translate. This is like an incoming call stuff. There's a lot of stuff in here that's kind of outside the scope of this video, but I'll explain it all later. This is a lot of C++, which is mainly what the unit is. But uh, the unit 
as a whole runs Windows ME from like 2001 or something like that. So this is a bunch of information that I'll explain later. There's like GUI style stuff and that'll be really, really interesting to dig through later. There's Pandora code. That'll be really fun to dig through. Um, but yeah, this is basically just a bunch of stuff that we're not supposed to have that we actually have. More on that later on another video. So what I want to show you next is how to actually extract this upgrade.lgu and explain what's in it. So as you can see, I, this is my backup folder. I don't do anything with it. Ignore this folder. It's for a later date. Um, no navigation since I have a non-navigation head unit. There's no point in me looking through the navigation stuff when it's pretty much exactly the same. So all you have to do is basically run this CMD file, which is just a simple call to the um, LGU file and extracts it to this folder. Now you get two folders once you extract the LGU file. Uh, there's the stuff with all the main like bootloader things in it, and then there's just these like three folders. So there's a full write-up on techx.onl, my website, on each of these folders, um, what I could figure out quickly. And as we dig through this, that um, page will be updated and, you know, kept nice and neat and all that. But, you know, stuff like this, you basically just open it in a hex editor and try to figure out what it does, what it is. See if it's something that could be modified. Maybe open it in IDA Pro would be a lot smarter since it's a bin file it's probably something that would be executed somewhere or used somewhere in the boot process obviously since it's bootloader um firmware stuff this is like the bluetooth some other things that i don't know what they do this font stuff this is the font of the actual head unit you could technically replace these but one rule of thumb when it comes to replacing anything on the head unit uh one always have a backup and two it for right now, at least, let me let me phrase it that way. For right now, you have to use um, the method of rename and replace to get any customization on the head unit. So I could go find font ttf files. I could go find popular fonts from like Font Squirrel, for example. Um, Let's see, if I wanted... I want something cool. I kind of like this one. Let's see. Droid Sans, that's like actual Android stuff. Let's see, display. Ah, this makes sense. A lot of this, a lot of the fonts obviously are really small, so you don't want anything super high detailed or, you know, crazy. Um, so you got to kind of be careful with what you select. Let's go to random page five. Oh god, that would look awful. We'll do... We'll do this one, the Primus. Actually, that's an off-site download. I don't want that. We'll do this one. Download TTF. So as you can see, it downloads the TTF image. And what you can do is just drag this over. So let's say I want to replace this one. Make sure it looks kind of the same. Cool, it goes all the way to 72. So what you have to do is basically rename that and then rename this hdb.ttf and then put this on the head unit, which I'll have a tutorial for much later down the road uh, for you guys. But you can put this on the head unit and then once you turn your car off and turn it back on, this font file will be loaded into memory instead of this one. And from there, you'll actually get this font on your head unit instead of this where this one specifically is used you'd also have to replace this one and this one to get the effect basically everywhere because three different fonts are obviously used everywhere so that's just a quick tutorial for you guys of an example of how to replace something um 
but there's the font grace note is something to do with the music it sounds awful from what i looked up uh some language files some model stuff this is for like the car models this actually was a very interesting folder to dig through at one point when i was first starting to mess with this stuff um now it doesn't actually give much info but from there you're able to figure out what other cars also use the same head unit and then this is the thing that's kind of been the most requested and stuff like that the actual head unit look so these are going to be all the animations and stuff like that this is going to be the backgrounds the thumb up thumb down for pandora um this is going to be an actual background right here that you'll find sometimes in use uh, I have this modified on my head unit outside in my car. The different warning labels and stuff. The light blue around it is what becomes transparent. So you don't actually, since it's reading BMP files, BMP can only have a certain select number of colors in it. So this specific blue comes out as transparent on the head unit instead of using PNG files because PNG files, I think we're either non-existent at the time or something like that i don't know so granted there are some transparent files here but if you're again if you're doing some sort of replacement you have to replace the file in the format and name that it is for now and then you know there's that there's the dvd menu um in case you want to play a dvd which i did not know that our head unit could play dvds can it play dvds I have not known that. I know there's the modification to play movies while driving, and I'll eventually have a tutorial on that. I just have to do it myself, you know, obviously to learn it. Um, but this is where all that stuff is, long story short, when it comes to modifying the head unit. There's like the setup stuff, um, different screensaver and all that. Ew, beats, why? I never have seen that before. Screensaver stuff. All the different backgrounds for like clocks and just this is the setup menus itself. Voice stuff. Um, more skinning stuff. This is the different themes. I don't know yet what happens if, for example, you go type C. Let's say you take one of these folders and do a custom theme and you do type d let's say i don't know if it'll auto populate that on the head unit or not and actually just notice hey there's a custom there's another theme here select it i don't know if that'll work i haven't tried that yet on my own personally that'll be something that i test here you know once the weather's nicer but there's a bunch of stuff you can do there's like the different statuses and volume knob and like the little bar for it uh so much stuff you can do there is one other thing i did find um this uses the same sound format as xbox 360s so if you go 360 converter dot com with the um to do convert audio to raw pcm so you could do like MP3, WAV, WMA, RAW, PCM, OG, you know, any of these formats. You can convert them to uh, a PCM format, which means you can do custom ringtones for when people are calling you on your head unit very easily. I don't think this is going to play in VLC. Uh, 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 nope, wrong button. I don't think this plays in VLC. Let me find out real quick. Where's my TV remote so I don't get blasted by audio here? Oh my god, I was at like 20. I never put my TV at 20. I must have been listening to music and cleaning last night. I don't even remember what I did last night. That's kind of sad. No. So, yeah, it doesn't play it. I'm sure I can get a PCM to um, MP3 converter somewhere too. Or make one, because it's not hard to make a converter in C-sharp. Um, with, especially with how many APIs are out there, but, uh, oh, that's cool. Some extra options. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. You, you can make custom ringtones and stuff like that. And then just replace this file. The mute sound. 
I've never actually heard that before, so I don't know what it does. Let me, hold on, let's do one more open with here, and we'll do hex editor. Oh. <laughs> that is not what I expected. <laughs> Wait. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> don't be pulling my leg like this. Okay. <laughs> there is some beef to those to those files. <laughs> I was really worried there for a second. But yeah, you can use this converter online to make custom ringtones and stuff on the head unit. There's so much that's actually possible on this head unit, and it's just going to take time to explain it all. When it comes to all these different files there's so much different crap that can be different things that can be done that was terrible grammar um and it, it just takes time like if you want to edit a text string for example you can just open up these different bin files and like a hex editor and search for it or your better idea is probably not doing it this way uh because who knows what you'll break elsewhere um, but there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. So like power off, awaken, um, you don't want to really customize that stuff, but like, it doesn't hurt. Um, let's see. I wanted to see if that was in here for like the themes and stuff like that. The skins. Let me see. Yeah, there's nothing in here. Let's see if we can find that stuff real quick. Here's the kernel. Let's open that with a hex editor because I don't actually really understand this kind of stuff, so. Oh. Wow. Okay, that tells you how old this shit is. Enable debugging stuff. That would be pretty cool. I gotta figure out... One thing that I really want to figure out is where the data codes are for the head unit for getting to the desktop. Because if I can figure out where those codes are, I can set it to something easy like 111111. Because right now it's some weird number like 72928 It's like a really weird extended long stupid code. I'd really like to find where that code is saved and change it to something stupid simple. Um, but again, that's going to take time and digging. And once I find it, you guys will know about it. I'll add it to the page. Um, on how to change that and how to change it on your head unit. But for right now, um, I just wanted to make a basic video explaining all this stuff and uh, add it to that post. And eventually, you know, as I get more detailed myself on this, you guys can get more detailed as well because this stuff is fun for me to mess with. I love messing with this stuff, my daily life stuff. Uh, there will be more Lift Tech tutorials coming. To I have the day off today. I'm going to be making the web page on techx.onl for all the lith tech stuff. I know nobody that does anything with the Veloster head unit hacking probably cares about lith tech. I just thought about that, so this is a very pointless way to end a video. But yeah, always pay attention to the techx.onl website. That's where updates and things for this sort of thing will be because it doesn't really fit under sinful Android. It doesn't really fit under lith archive it doesn't fit under vg vault um doesn't fit under 1320 challenge this is like its own thing so i'm putting it under my main website um custom firmware stuff this will be coming soon i found some leaked custom firmware with like sd card setups it should actually run the custom firmware on our head unit but again this is stuff for another day that we'll figure out at another time but like it has custom launchers it's got the install and uninstall and that's total commander what no stupid ass yeah that's total commander so there's like an ftp unit on here too so that's interesting but uh also our head unit is used in cars in russia which made things really easy um for finding like other this is actually an ex executable that's got the same name on our head unit. So I'm wondering what happens if I replace it with this one. Um, and then there's just like all the other stuff, as you can see. 
There's the core player. Not much to this one, unfortunately. But it's it, it's still something, and I'm going to figure all this out eventually. But, you know, as I figure it out, you guys will learn, I'll learn, and we'll crack this head unit open and see what we can do. I am looking for a spare head unit. Sorry, headphone users, I just noticed I peaked the shit out of my audio. I'm looking for a spare head unit that I can just plug in outside of my car, or getting this working on, like, a virtual machine. I don't know if the second one is possible, but I'm definitely looking for a spare head unit to test this stuff on, so I can look into hardware modding, like... RAM changing or changing the storage size and actually loading the music from the head unit itself or see if I can find a computer small enough that'll support the drivers for the actual car into the head unit uh, or on the software that the head unit runs to actually work with our car. But, uh, you know, so many people replace their head units anyway with like android based head units what's the freaking point you know it i guess a lot of people don't really care about the head unit stuff when it comes to being connected to the car itself so unless you have like a turbo model and there's like some special hoop de doo stuff you can do with the turbos and controlling it and stuff like that i don't know i'm just blabbing on now ideas so i'm gonna shut up and let you guys go about your day so if you want to know anything more, leave questions and comments and stuff below, and I'll try to answer them uh, as I learn or, you know, something like that, or try to point you in the right direction. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.